Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to talk about Oka Factory Punching Board. This is a fairly new item uh, in leather craft industry. Uh, Japan, you guys, as you guys know, they are a very crafty um, culture, they are a very crafty country and in Japan the leather craft is really big and there are a lot of tools that are made in Japan, really really nice. And this is one of the newest items that I had my um, eyes on very well that I wanted to try and, um, and to know what's going on and that I want to say I'm very impressed I'm very pleased with the product so I'm going to introduce uh, you guys about it uh, if you are already have um, the, the cutting board or the HDPE density cutting board you are still okay because I know I've been really recommending it for cutting purposes or any of the pricking iron purposes this is still, it's, it, it is needed for um, your leather craft world because of the size and everything, it's very nice and it is a nice product but then, this one, however, is better than this HDP cutting board, yeah? But at the same time, it doesn't mean that this is bad, right? So, for your nice expensive pricking irons, this is your uh, go-to item So. This is actually the pricking iron board or punch board or cutting board and it does show you fairly nice um, representation how the um, the board is consisted on the on the sideways if you cannot see it well can you see it now okay so in the in the center of the board there are some porous um, a porosity I can see yeah. and uh, on the surface it looks kind of wood grain yeah, which they advertise it as a wood grain um, punch board or pricking iron board no? so it has a very nice texture it's not really rough texture uh, you will, it will not rub any marks on your leather because it's very very smooth grain texture I guess this comes from the manufacturing process where they have to mix in um, all this material together and they, they leave this, this kind of grain marks on, on the on thing and it, it is fairly thick as well I heard a lot of viewers um, from my channel that Ever since I recommended this um, big cutting board, a lot of people ask me where do I, where do they get this really thick cutting board. I already put a link in the description or comment box where you can get this. And this is th just a thick cutting board. It's not a specialty item that you you buy from. Uh, even though this is green, it's just a it's a, just a color is green. It's not a special material. This is just a high density polyethylene cutting board. This is about two centimeters thick. Yeah? And this one. Is slightly thicker. Now this one is um, this one is three centimeters. So if you are in a country where you cannot get thick cutting board, I, because I I've, I've heard from many viewers that the thickest they can find is around one centimeter, which is very economical because it makes sense. A lot of a lot of cooking industry don't need such a thick board like this. It's just uh, too heavy for for to item to be shipped out, and it's a waste of material because not many guys have. Um, equipment or services to to um, even out every now and often to, to make a new surface so it is economical to sell them uh, one centimeter I, I get it so if you're living in a country where you cannot get thick board this is your item yeah this is a bit softer than HDP so it's a bit better softer to your cutting tools and it's a thicker so it has a more mass to it so today I'm going to talk a lot about this um, cutting board and before I do that, let me show you where you can get this. This is Oka Factory Tools. Uh, I'll put the link in the description. And they all, all they make, they're the manufacturer of all these Japanese leather craft tools. Yeah. So uh, with the pricking iron from cutting tools and all these edge bevelers, they all sell everything and they ship worldwide. Yeah. Which is and their website absolutely clean and very nice. They can they translate it to every language you can you can find. And their English translation is really spot on, and they they have a price on it, oils, punches, stuff like that, and the carving tools. And if you scroll down, there are so many items. They yeah, it's called it's called cutting board. No, yeah, it's called cutting board here on on the other section, and they have a price on it. The price is really, I must say, it's really, really nice uh, for a um, board like this, really thick, um, high functional, high quality cutting boards, and the size and thickness, this price is really nice. They ship it worldwide, so you can 
you can check them out by contacting them. Uh, they have a formula, so you don't necessarily have to just send them random emails. They, they give you a specific formula to contact from, so that's nice. If you are not very keen on those, you can just go to leathercraftsouls.com and then you can just find rubber pound board wood grain finish. Yeah, This one is mini S large. This suppose, happens to be minus size S. So it's not the it's not the smallest one. It's the middle size, or maybe M. Maybe the, uh, there is no medium. Yeah. So if you are if you you have um, enough um, budget, you could also go for large. Yeah. It's, the larger is the better. So I just have too many punching boards, so I just had to try with the small things. But in the future, I will get the the large one for sure. Yeah. So. I'm to talk about how it's used and what's the difference as well. So the biggest difference between normal cutting board and this special Oka factory punch board is that how soft this is but still very firm enough to hold the material and without um, bouncing back and re reduce energy to your pricking iron. So it absorbs shock very well and it's, it doesn't really uh, bounce back too much. It just absorbs the energy, it's hard but then it's soft enough so that it doesn't leave any mark to your leather. So what's the problem with the conventional cutting board is that they, when they have a, such a rough surface because of the lot of use, if you're uh, trying to punch your leather craft item laying on your piece of project which has the both sides of the, the leather smooth side, not, not the rough spot, spot, right? So if you're leaving your project like this and then you try to punch in yeah, like this as you give out the pressure you're leaving your scratch marks onto your leather very well uh, I'm, I'm sure you guys already noticed this if you haven't really um, get into the craft uh, long enough but this leather board doesn't do that uh, it will leave pores um, if you die, uh, penetrate your leather uh, with the pricking iron a lot but then it can be restored very quickly I'll show you so to make it fair, I lay down my thick plywood underneath it, so it's the same um, bottom for both of the cutting boards and it's a um, flimsy desk underneath, so it's, it would be a fairly uh, same test. And I'll just try to show you how it looks like as it punches through the leathers. So uh, this is 6mm Japanese style pricking iron. And I'll just punch it. Yeah, so see, this is what I'm talking about. Do you see this crisscross pattern on your leather? Do you see it? This is the marks that I'm talking about. It leaves its marks very well. Yeah. Now I'm going to try on Oka Factory cutting board. It doesn't leave the marks, it just punches through the hole. Yeah? And it's, it's, it uh, penetrates a lot more as it seems. So I'll just, now I'll try to punch harder. So, so again, the fresh piece of leather. It penetrated a lot. And it leaves this very these marks right here like this. Now Oka Factory. Oh yeah we have to take a look at this example. It leaves heavy, heavy marks to your leather, right? So, let's try on Oka Factory. It 
it did leave some marks too, but it's not as severe as it seems. The other one, right? Now let's take a look at the um, examine the work surface of the whole area so that we can compare what happened. So this is the precam marks that left on Oka factory cutting board, punching board, and this is just normal HDPE high density cutting board marks. Yeah. It seems that it's a little bigger on um, on cutting boards and what you can do is actually to restore the area you can just use a roller to close the pores smaller on these okay it will close up a little smaller but you cannot really close the one with the HD cutting board this is recommended by Oka factory in Japan and uh, no more way to restore it daily or often is by using a roller like this yeah, just to close up the pores a little bit smaller so that you have a smoother surface in overall and if you have a too much rough surface what you can do is you can lay a sheet of the baking paper on the top of your freaking iron board and you can use your iron to iron it down and it kind of softens the surface and it gives out um, tension back in the close-up pores like it's it's of course it will leave some marks but then it will go on pretty much away because it will um, this is I think quite um, lower temperature processed kind of rubberized material I'm not sure what kind of material this is but then it kind of melts away it kind of gives a new flow of the material so that it closes it back again unlike this HDP um, cutting board this is a more higher temperature uh, material so it withstands such a high boiling water as well but then also it needs to be much higher temperature to process again so uh, that's why it doesn't really go back to normal state with a um, hot iron uh, so there's ups and downs uh, for each application so I highly recommend this cutting board for your um, or your uh, pricking iron as well because as this is very soft and very um, very it's it's really easy on the, on the cutting tools um, it's quite tricky when you're using punch tools uh, like pricking iron or uh, if you're using punch tools like this tools uh, what you're looking for is quite firm surface so that energy doesn't bounce it back and it just needs to concentrate on the tip of your tool so that it cuts through the leather and if you are using very soft like real rubber which is you can really squeeze it right you can just feel it moves uh, it's really not good for your leather craft because your energy just bounces back and it just doesn't give you stable surface to work on and if it's too hard, like ceramic or steel or um, granite, uh, of course it will damage your tool because the surface is too hard. Yeah? So what you need is a rough, no, no, firm, but also soft material to protect your edge from. Now, if you're using high quality pricking iron or even cheap one, like basic one like this as well, uh, you just need to protect your steel tip as much as possible. This thing protects, but this thing protects even further. Yeah? So if you want to really protect your pricking iron, if you want to use it for a long, long time, choose this cutting board. It's really nice. Yeah? I am very happy that I made this purchase, and I think it's, uh, it's a quite nice tool that if, if I am going to use my um, very expensive um, pricking irons, this will be my go-to but then also this will be still used because of the size I like the size of it and uh, if you're if I'm just going to use it like on the rough side down like this it will be a no problem as well so this will come in handy so don't worry if you already purchased this you can also buy a small one like this also use it for special occasion as well so uh, it's just a uh, one little luxurious item um, you can you can buy for if you're looking for um, kind of what, what can you um, improve on your cutting surface as well uh, this cutting board is can be also used for um, your cutting tool as well so if you're using 
knife like this you can also um, use it uh, for your um, for your cutting cutting board as well so you can just also cut it like this it's, it's uh, good for your uh, cutting board as well so it's a multi-purpose it's a um, fixable repairable so it's it's really nice so I highly recommend it you guys yeah so I'll put the link in this description on the comment box where you can check it out I hope you guys uh, see you in the next video have a great day bye bye